I think this is my PB, I think. <laughs> Academy YouTube. Today we're going to do an upper body strength and power session. This would be typical for a rugby player or any contact sport, maybe two days out from a session. It's a tricky one because people don't know where to pitch their volumes. We'll show you exactly what you should be doing 48 hours from the session. Game. From the game. From the game. Okay, so we're going to look at an upper body session. This would be typical for a rugby player on a Thursday before a game. So you've got to be careful on the Thursday. Don't want too much volume. We want to get some power and strength exposure in there. So we're going to start off with a power superset. Then we're going to go to some strength work and a little bit of overhead strength work just to finish. So we'll walk you through it as we do the session, but this is all it's going to be. 16 work sets, absolute maximum. I'd always recommend for upper body doing like just some, even if it's just six sets of prehab, it's just good for shoulder health. And plus, because we're going to go into a pretty dynamic movement to start, you don't want cold shoulders and start throwing barbells and slamming balls. So just look after the shoulders. It only takes five minutes. And I promise you, you'll get that back in your session as well. Then wise again. So now arms nice and straight. That's it. That's perfect. Should be feeling that sort of like in your traps right down the middle of your back here. Yeah, that's it. Right down the middle. We do the same swimmers one, um, but just for somebody who hasn't done it before. So if you go on your chest and do it, it gives you really good feedback doing it on the floor, which if you touch the floor, your elbows aren't high enough. And then just do press, press ahead of you like a shoulder press. That's it, perfect. And try and keep your elbows and hands off the floor. If you're doing it on a bench, sometimes if your arms can be a bit low and you don't get the feedback from the ground. So if you're new to this exercise and you're not sure how it should feel, drop your chest on the floor, do what Ben's doing and make sure your arms don't touch the ground and you know you're doing it really well. So I'll do this for five minutes for every session. If I train three times a week, that's a quarter of an hour of solid upper body work. So like, like prehab. So that's what I mean, rather than like dedicating a whole separate 20 minute session in your week, just do a little bit before each session, that's fine. We've just finished off then with a bit of thoracic mobility. We can do this together, It'll take one minute. So on all knees and just basically just, just twisting up, just five each arm. Especially like your average rugby player who's not a professional, just sitting at a desk all day. Oh, big time. Or school all day. Oh, it helps your posture massively. That's the thing I've found mostly since finishing and doing a lot of computer work, my top of my oh, back. Oh, you like this? Yeah. And that's why in the session we got face, something called face pulls to finish off. Because a lot of people like to push more than they pull. So I imagine some people listening might think, oh, actually, yeah, I do probably like six sets or 10 sets of push. And I do like six sets of pull. You should actually pull more than you push mm. for good shoulder integrity. Yeah, so yeah. last one, then we'll just do a 20 second stretch to the lats and it increases that range of motion in your thoracic as well. So just hold this for 10 to 20 seconds and we'd be ready to, ready to rock. So if people got shoulder pain, <laughs> yes. I'd be like, have you done prehab for five minutes, three times a week for your session? And most people go, no, I haven't. I'm like, that's why you got shoulder pain, mate. Better off doing, if you're training for 50 minutes, rather than do 50 minutes of weights, do 45 minutes of weights and five minutes of prehab. I promise you in the long run, you'll be way better for it. Right, so we'll, we'll get into the session now, Ben. So what we'll do is, is uh, we only do two sets of each because it's more power. We don't need to do, some people flood themselves with four sets of power. You don't really need to. We just do three med ball slams. Because it's an upper body session, we want to isolate our back and lats. So rather than like curling over and throwing it, you almost want to kind of isolate your back muscles. So it's directly up and just launch it down with your arms because that's going to use your lat and back muscles. So try and break that ball. The emphasis is really on the intent. You don't just want to sort of slam it at 50%, you're going to get no benefit from that. Unless it's max effort, you're not going to get the power, power output that you want and the power development that you want. Just three reps. We're going to do landmine, landmine throws here. Now you can do this standing up, but the thing is when you're standing up, you often bring your legs into it. Great for a full body session, but if we strictly go in for just an upper body session, we'll do it on our knees because it takes our arms out of it. I'm just going to throw it, I'm not going to release it, just going to press it up as hard as I can. So, control the way down okay. and throw it up, just three reps. I was going to think I was going to be catching it. Then. Yeah, you can do if you're, if, you're, <laughs> if you're standing up, you generate a bit more power because this is quite. If you're on your knees, it's a little bit more shoulder emphasis. Okay. If you stand up, obviously the angle of your arm to your chest, it becomes a little bit more chesty. So it's a little bit more 
shoulder work. With this, it's not about ego lifting, so don't try and get like heavy weight on here. It's much more about speed, because it's the power emphasis that we want. So don't slug it up with 40 kilos, that's not what we're after. Lightweight, move it quick. Three is plenty as long as it's max effort. So you see some people might be doing power, kind of like I said with the med balls, and maybe a bit like this. It's like, no, it's gotta be like, you've gotta like literally Intent. slam it 100% every rep, otherwise okay. you're not gonna get that power adaptation that you want, so max effort every time. And how would I know then if I'm doing this, how do I know to go a little bit heavier because I feel comfortable? If you were gonna up this, I wouldn't go up in it by 10 kilo. I'd probably chuck a biscuit on, like a two and okay. a half kilo. If that's starting to move really quick and it feels easy, move it up. But the moment that starts to feel like you can't release it, it's probably too heavy. Yeah, so you yeah. wanna feel like you can release it if you want, but you're yeah. stopping yourself from okay. releasing it. So typically with bench press, it's, it gets a bit easier as the move goes up. So we add a band, because as the band extends, the tension increases. So it makes sure that the move stays hard as the band extends. So we don't want to go too heavy on this. Like I say, we're only two days out from a game. So we're only going to go three reps, similar again, max intent. Not quite as light as the landmine. So it's sort of that middle, kind of what we like, at, well, it's technical speed strength type work. So only three reps. And what we don't want, close to a game. The eccentric part of a, of a move, which is the, the part on the way down, that's typically what causes a lot of doms. So we've got it set up on this. So it's called a dead stop bench. So all you have to worry about is the concentric phase of the movement. Nice. Max effort again, just drop it back down. It's a nice one as well. You don't really need a spotter. So it's a good one. Nice, man. There you go, just, just three reps. Again, intent, move the bar as fast Same as you can. Same again, only three reps, but I want you to move it as fast as you can. The intent that you want. This is my PB, I think. <laughs> <laughs> This is just strength work, heavy dumbbell, five reps. So this one, a lot of people do like to... Weight, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people like to put their knee up when they single arm row, but I, I, I personally prefer to do it with your feet off the bench because it just makes you use your hips better. you just a bit more core activation. So you can have a bit of a split stance if you want. You can have a square stance. I personally quite like the square stance, particularly when it's for rugby, I find me as a back row player as well, I'm in that stance a lot. You know, whether it's in like a ruck position, a jackal position, a scrum position. So for forwards, not that you don't really get too much forward specific training, but rather than do a, a knee on the bench, I'd rather just have a three point stance like this and then just roll like that, making sure you keep your hips nice and square and solid. Yes, yeah, in a more of a, a game specific position more specific. there, in your jackaline type of... Exactly. And again, you said five each side, is it? Just five each side, three sets of five, that's plenty. So you can do dumbbell press, it's no problem, but I like doing the dead stop and I'd rather do say dumbbell shoulders early in the week. Like I say, because you're just you're taking out the you have got an eccentric phase, you are lowering it. You can drop it on there. When you're doing like high reps, lots of slow eccentric reps, that's when you get that soreness. You don't want to be doing shoulder presses for 10 reps, nice and slow on the way down. Fine at the start of the week when you've got time to recover. But on a Thursday, if you're doing that, you're gonna go line out lift on a Saturday and you're gonna be like, oh my God, my shoulders are sore. So don't do too much volume on a Thursday. It's a bit, one of the biggest mistakes we see from more novice trainers. So, um, so you say so you played New Zealand Lions on, on a Saturday. This is a type of session that you would have to yeah, done so, on a Thursday before. Yeah, so I'm getting, when you look at this, not including the power moves, then that, that's not gonna build muscle. That's mm. just more explosive. You're only looking at six sets of push, six sets of pull, and they're all in that strength rep range. So they're not gonna really fatigue you. Like if, you, if you're reasonably well trained, three to six reps isn't gonna really dom you up. You know, you're not gonna get, sorry, doms, um, delayed onset muscle soreness. Yeah. You're not gonna really get um, soreness. So you gotta think if you train on a Thursday, you've got six quality push sets in, six quality 
pull sets in and then you eat well for 48 hours, you, you recover in time to play, you know? But if you change that to, you're doing nine sets of push, nine sets of pull, 10 to 15 reps on each, you've certainly just, you've, you've gone way too much volume. Like I said, start of the week maybe, but, n but not on a Thursday. That'll be way too much for a Thursday. Yeah, I always felt towards the end of the, end of the week, just moving quick. I just yeah, felt so just much better good. on the pitch. Just feel good, yeah. yeah. But maybe some of your young followers, like if you're training on your own as well, you don't, it, same with the bench press, you don't have to worry a whole lot about a spotter because you've got these arms as well. So when you go in like strength overhead, I'm always a little bit nervous people doing that if they're a novice trainer on their own because mm. I've seen people go up. I've, I've been in gyms, they've gone up. And they've got, they've got back going back. Oh, man, it's, it's shocking. So when you're in this sort of environment, it's just safe. You can lift in a strength rep range without a spotter. So it's the best of both worlds, really. So let's dead stop here. Press it up. Drop it back down. Take the weight. Let the weight come off. Don't sort of touch and rep. Okay, relax to the bottom. Yeah, let it come off because you want that weight to be dead. Hence the word dead stop bench. And then boom, press it solid. Nice back up again. Okay. I think I got the chin for this one, mate. I've got to clear it past my nose and as well. And the nose, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is kind of rear shoulder again. We started off with some prehab type work, but this is probably one of the most underrated exercises I think out there. I do this pretty much every upper body session. So it's just a face pull. The reason it's called a face pull is you keep your elbows nice and high and just put it towards your face. We don't want your elbows down here because then it just turns into a low row and you're just going to start using your lats. If you flare your elbows, so if your elbows are tight, you can see you're using all this musculature up here. If your elbows drop, it becomes a lat move, which we don't want. So you want those elbows nice and high, you're pulling towards your face and using all your rear delts and traps. And this is really good for negating shoulder pain. You know, you're talking about sitting at the desk all day yeah if people want to correct their posture and just try i'm not saying here just a disclaimer it's going to get rid of shoulder pain but if you do your five minutes prep and you do face pulls just three sets of eight to ten i, I promise you your shoulders in the long term will feel so much better for it and plus you get some nice juicy traps doing this as well who doesn't yeah. want juicy yeah. traps yeah. <laughs> How was that? Yeah, cheers for that. Oh, good. ready. Feeling good. Good to roll back the ears a bit, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love training like that. The one thing I would say, though, is great now. The training is the stimulus. Now you've got 40 hours to recover from that. Like, you have to eat enough calories, good quality food, definitely get your protein in. And then, because the next two days, that's when you're going to recover, rebuild from this, and get stronger, more powerful. So don't think that, oh, I'm just going to do three one-hour sessions in the gym. It's getting the meals in outside the gym which is going to help you grow and develop into a better athlete as well. So really good stimulus, put the right fuel in you and you'll be gold. And then your programs then they cover everything leading up to the game to what pre-season, off weeks and everything? Everything, yeah. We have like a strength and power development plan which would be much more along what we just did today. That would be typically for in-season. And then you've got pre-season plans as well. Pre-season is very different because you don't have a game on a weekend to factor for, so you can add more volume. And that's a really good opportunity for three months to probably try and put a bit more size on than you normally would in season, because you can't do that much volume, obviously, in season. So yeah, pre-season and in season, nice mix of both. Factors whether really you have a game or not. So um, yeah, we can help them out whatever they want to do. Class, mate. Again, Legend. thanks so much. Thanks, thanks for No worries. Good to see you again. See you soon. Massive thanks to Ben John from the Rugby Trainer for popping down to Chester Academy. We love that session. If you want to find more skills, drills, and tips on rugby, you can follow Ben. Uh, just search the Rugby Trainer. Ben's on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. You find him everywhere. So search him up. He's got some awesome tips and drills. And thanks for tuning in. See you next time.